So I've tried to film this video a few times now and I have so much brain fog and, I'm in, and I have so much fatigue that I'm having to pause to close my eyes for a few seconds. I wrote a script for this video because I was not able to keep uh, track of what I was saying. I stopped remembering what I was saying a few seconds after like talking and then the video was complete shit. So this is like my fourth time redoing it and if you can tell that I'm looking down which you might be a little bit because of my sunglasses and the fact that you can see like my laptop and there's only one laptop there but, but yeah so um <gasps> I am ticking a lot today but I am in a time crunch for this video so we're just gonna work with it But I was not expecting to make this video. In 2018, I learned so much as a person and I grew more in one year than I ever thought possible. And to not celebrate that, like, totally undervalues it. <sighs> Last year, I learned about self-love and I started applying it to my everyday life. And at first, it honestly felt like I was lying to myself. Um, but thankfully I kept going because the reward was far bigger than I ever, like, thought imaginable. I wanted to learn to be okay with being alone, and I wanted to learn to love myself because I, like, never even thought, I never even knew or heard about the concept of self-love. So it was, like, this big thing that I really felt called to doing. Um, hmm. I knew that just because I was alone I didn't have to feel lonely. And I wanted that because at the time I would have rather been in a relationship that I knew wasn't going to work out and I wasn't happy in than being alone on my own, not dating anybody. I had to learn self-reliance, which um, scared me in a different way than I think it scares like somebody that's not disabled because I'm always going to need help with something. Um, but I wanted to be, I wanted to learn to be self-reliant on things that I totally could control, like my happiness. And I was tired of hoping that I could find somebody that would fix me. Because wanting somebody to do that is irrational, and it wasn't going to get me or the other person anywhere, and it obviously wasn't. It was making me miserable and the person that I was with miserable. The first thing I did was, um, cut people out of my life that I knew were like we're gonna like hinder me from reaching my goals that I had set for myself and this was sometime in the middle of 2018 it wasn't like in the beginning of the year it was during the middle of it um something that I always recommend is don't wait for New Year's to um fix something or I guess I don't really like fixing I don't like the word fixing something but you know, don't wait for a specific time to imp start improving yourself if you want to improve yourself do it today you know, don't wait till after Christmas or don't wait till after New Year's because you could start now and e you'll get to your goal faster. <gasps> cutting the people, cutting the, cutting the certain people that I did out of my life was aimed to, was aimed to make my mental health better and it very much did. I learned to trust myself and that I could re rely on myself for happiness or when I was upset that I could rely on myself, that I didn't need to call somebody else to help me during that time, that I could do it myself. And the progress that I have made over 2018, which will never stop, but the progress that I have made over 2018, I will never ever not be thankful for that because it set the ground, like, I don't know how to say it, but it set like the ground level of whatever, foundation, I guess you could say, to build myself and grow myself to somebody that can deal with all the things that I'm dealing with right now because if I had gone through the amount of um if I have gone through my body um completely how do I say this I've always had symptoms but when the biggest onset started happening if that had happened like later in my life not later earlier in my life like in high school I don't know if I would have been here so that journey that I did really helped me in today and how I handle going to doctor's appointments and how I handle not having answers and um, I think it's really helped me calm down. I'm still a very very anxious person. I am not perfect. Um, I still have days where I cry. I honestly cry probably every day but it's not for 
yes Oscar um I honestly cry every day which I don't think is a bad thing I cry um more now over happy things than I do over sad things and um I'm in tuned with my emotions a lot more I'm not afraid of them um I want to understand why I'm feeling a certain way instead of bearing it down and pretending it's not there because I did that with my health and it's gotten me into an area where I have so many sh things that are wrong with me that it's hard to focus on each individual thing. <sighs> I just really wanted to work on getting out of this hole that I kind of dug myself in because I was not a happy person and I'm a lot happier now and I'm thankful for that. Like, I, I can't express how fucking like, you are noisy today. I can't express like how, I guess just like, I'm so thankful that I did this. Like if I could go back and hug my um, past self for doing this, I fucking would because I didn't think that it would have this big of an impact on me and it had a huge, 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 huge impact. You are very noisy. Can you come here? Let's say hi to everybody. Let's say hi. Hi. Can you say hi to them? No. Don't look away. Thanks, Oscar. No, don't tear my chair up. Baby. That's Oscar for you. <sighs> As I said earlier, my self-growth journey will never stop, but what I but I know what my goals are for 2019. I like to do goal-based resolutions. In my opinion, many people don't keep up with resolutions because I think that the time period of a full year makes it really easy to procrastinate. Or like you do really really good in the first few months and then you slack off and you for you're just like mm, tomorrow. And then next thing you know, I guess, like, for instance, you wanted to go to the gym or something. You haven't gone to the gym in two months, and you're like, well, why should I start again kind of attitude. I'm not saying that everybody has that attitude, but a lot of people do have that attitude. And so I feel like little bitty goals uh, or milestones, even if they're like inch stones, which would be smaller than a milestone, which can actually be huge, bigger for whoever's happening. It just kind of depends. I, I'm not making sense, I don't think. Whatever the, the sized goal you are, you're making, it doesn't matter as long as you're making goals. And um, if you slack off one day, don't give up, you keep going. Like, um, I had this mental thing where every time I would sit on the toilet, I would tell myself in my head that I hated myself and I wish I would die. So every time I would sit on the toilet, that just got really dark, but every time I just, every time I sit on the toilet, when that happened, I, afterwards I would say, no, you love yourself. This is your illness. This is not you. You still love yourself. Your 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 life is worth living. And I would thank myself for staying alive. That's kind of how my endings kind of happened because how many people thank you for putting up with the bullshit that you put up on a daily basis? No one does. And that was something that I did for myself, which might be a little weird, but yeah. Um doing that really fucking helped. And eventually it got to the point where I stopped saying that. Now there, there might be a few times now, every now and then, where, they'll, where my mind will be like, fuck, I hate myself. And then again, I'll go back and say, no, you love yourself. I kind of feel like it's brainwashing yourself in a good way. Um. <sighs> a lot of my um, goals or resolutions are always going to kind of be the same, like continuous self-love, continuous self-growth continue growing my self-esteem, all those beautiful things. But I like, now I plan on kind of to branch out on sp specific things that I have problems with. So new ones I wanna work on is being more patient, more kind, more understanding, which I already think I am all those things, but you can never not be enough in my opinion, I guess. Um, a big thing that I wanna do is work on being more confident in my wheelchair because I am very, self-conscious in it in particular moments. When you're in a wheelchair, you're in a lower viewpoint of the world. People are looking down at you and that makes me feel, um, I don't know, it's, my camera died. But in the conversation, it doesn't bother me. But when people are looking down at me when I'm 
going past them it kind of makes me notice a little bit more um i get more stares which i always get stares when i'm ticking but um i get stares constantly now even if i'm not ticking and i don't constantly tick which i'll know <laughs> but a big thing that i have a problem with is i've always wanted to be really really small um, and I've wanted to take up as least amount of space as possible. I've wanted to be less of a burden as much as possible. Um, I'm a big person that says sorry over every single little thing to the point where it's aggravating. And I wanted to not do that because I don't need to apologize for things that my body does or for the space that I'm allowed to take up. Um, or like, there's just a bunch of reasons of uh, little things that I didn't expect to have to learn to cope with when you're in a wheelchair. And I just really want to work on those things because I shouldn't feel that way. And I can work on changing my point of view and mindset. You know, I can't change other people that are looking at me, but I can change a little bit of how I try to, I guess, how that makes me feel, you know? And it's not a purpose. It's not a perfect thing. There are people that like for instance at Walmart I've had people say things to me when I stand up to put my chair in the car um, You know those things are probably gonna always bother me, but um, I can work on not feeling like a burden when I'm trying to go this way in a tiny hallway and someone's trying to go this way normally before I was in a wheelchair I would back up in the corner and always let the person go before me even if it was my right away like I even have that problem when I'm driving but now that I'm in a wheelchair I have to go first because I'm basically a lot bigger than everybody else because I'm in this I'm in a device that's um I don't know how big it is but it, it's not that big but it's bigger than you take up more space when you're in a wheelchair. You get the point. And it's, um, it makes me kind of want to apologize and feel, um, like I'm inconveniencing them. And I hate inconveniencing people. <sighs> so, um, we're going to still be seeing a lot of 2018 videos, um, in the future. But if you have resolutions or if you have, um, goals of, um, things you plan on wanting to do for 2019 um, to improve your already amazing self, um, comment them down below. But before I go, I want to say thank you for following my journey in 2018 and I'm excited to have you follow my journey in 2019 and I really appreciate it more than you'll realize. So don't forget that I love you. Thank you for staying alive. Remember, you know your body better than anybody else, so please listen to it and I hope you have a good night. Bye. I want to give a special thanks to Tom Ford this year because he's a big reason of why my YouTube channel continued in 2018 to 2019. So thank you Tom. I appreciate you.